Hey, what's up, investors? My name is Devin Moreno. I don't even know how big this apartment is. It's 25 feet. I'm actually curious here. Hold on. 13 feet. You for recording all this, too? This might be entertaining. So 25, about 35 feet. 35 by 13 and a half. Good old handy measurement tools. Today I wanted to show you one of my Airbnbs that I have here in Baltimore City. You actually can do Airbnbs in Baltimore City despite what many people think. The problem is that you have to do it for 90 days. So if you're used to like midterm rentals out in like Austin, Texas or other areas where you can do 30 day rentals, this 90 day one might be a bit of a shock. But the reason this one works is because it's so close to Johns Hopkins Hospital. We rent this out to traveling nurses and the best part is we don't even need to use Airbnb's platform to do so. I talk about that on my channel, where exactly I go and such, so you can look in the description below for some of the uh, videos that talk about that. But today, I wanted to talk about the design of this one because I thought it was interesting. It's a 472 square foot little tiny home. Essentially, this is a duplex that we use one part of it as like uh, just basically a long-term rental. And then we use the other part of it as the Airbnb short-term rental, midterm, however you want to define it but one that's obviously less than long-term stay. So we'll call it a midterm rental for this purpose of this video. Let's go through it. This one should be actually pretty quick since it's only 472 square feet. We had to get a bathroom, a living room, a dining room, a bedroom, a uh, laundry room and storage and a, a full bath in this little space. So I wanna show you how we did it and maybe that can inspire some thoughts and ideas. You're seeing me here in the living room area. We actually managed to fit a little bit of a love seat, I'm gonna call it and um, you're seeing kind of like this overall design. I'm gonna walk around the house here so you can kind of get sort of a feel of it. Why did we choose these colors? So the entire feel of this house is actually similar to another house that we did. It's actually, once again, it's right next to it. It's a, it's a duplex. It's a black and white color scheme. So we used black vinyl flooring and then we used white walls. And then we even complemented it with these black outlet covers around a white outlet. So we kind of kept going with this black and white theme and then you can see it in even its most exaggerated form in the fact that the ceiling is even black in this unit. So all of it is a vaulted ceiling which prevents you from feeling kind of closed in. I wouldn't do black ceilings on like maybe a, a place with like eight foot high ceilings might feel a little bit claustrophobic, but on a 10 foot high ceiling, it actually really kind of creates a cool look where you actually lose your depth of field when you look at it and you can't really get, figure out exactly how high it is because it's already so high already. I actually really kind of like the look of that black ceiling, but that was the kind of feel we went for. When designing this, we were like, all right, what colors could we use to complement that? We don't want to go too aggressive in one or another. So we just use brown as a neutral and then green as sort of that extreme color. So a lot of times when choosing colors, sort of they have this, I think it's called the 60-40-10 rule. 60% of it's kind of one color, 40% of it's another color, and then 10% to completely contrast against the original two colors. So with this one, since we use neutral colors like white, brown, and black, we could have chosen red, yellow, or whatever. That would have completely transitioned away from the neutral color palette we chose. Now, we didn't want to go too far into a red territory. We actually had this brick wall that already has that red sort of color. My partner actually chose green. We chose sort of an industrial vibe that also had a nature vibe with it as well. Industrial kind of being Baltimore's sort of feel, and then had a little bit of nature. So you're seeing us complement it with a lot of this sort of plant life. We're gonna actually add more plant life over time, maybe other little ornaments, trinkets, and then we started really full on going the industrial route by maybe having little things like this, where you're seeing like metal frames and decoration. We even have this one that's actually my personal favorite. It's like kind of like a metallic Deer. <laughs> so this is kind of blending those two worlds. And then we even found a way to get industrial slash natural design. So here we have like flowers and such. So we kind of kept that sort of feel over and over and over again. In the future, where I really want to go with this is actually have really cool industrial wood frames that hold things and items on this brick wall and it would be kind of throughout the wall. Maybe up there on these top areas, we can actually have like little ornaments and such. We'll put things on top of there. Maybe even light that up, that space up. So these are little upgrades that we can do to make this tiny home 
feel a, a lot more like home, right? Like a lot more kind of cool. Outside of the black, the white, you're kind of seeing the basic color design. I'll show you that in the bedroom as well. Before we go into there, let's talk about this kitchen. So with this kitchen, we decided to go with a quartz countertop. We didn't want pure white because we already kind of had a lot of that. So we were like, let's put a little veining in there, kind of keep transitioning that black and white sort of color scheme. And then we chose black fixtures. We actually did choose stainless steel appliances. That was more for an appraisal purpose. We did black cabinet pools. We're actually not 100% done. We just put these cabinets in. We're actually gonna do black pools up here. So more black cabinet pools. Otherwise though, you see we're kind of keeping with stainless. We made sure that the aisle was 36 inches because that's the minimum size that you can have for an aisle. Otherwise, we actually just did standard cabinets everywhere else. Nothing else is that complicated. We did a little bit of shelving. We might do a little bit of more in a higher up space, but that might be just for like these type of things that you're not gonna use very often, right? How did we also get this tiny space? Well, one thing that we did, that stove, normally stoves are 30 inch stoves, that's a 24 inch stove. So that's actually a little bit smaller than the standard size. Because of that, we actually had trouble finding a 24 inch microwave that would be mounted above it. So that was a little bit of a complication that occurred where to save space, I normally would have wanted to mount the microwave, but they're not standard manufactured types, right? So now it's sitting there. We could probably maybe sit it up on this shelf. The other thing we did was do a 24 inch fridge. So normally you do like a 30 inch or something like that. We did a smaller one. It's a tiny home. They shouldn't need that much fridge space anyway. You can see it's still fairly large. So not that big a deal, but that's another thing we did to keep kind of shrinking this cabinet space as much as possible. For the living room, we just basically created a separation using the couch. So we actually made it feel like, okay, this is a kind of a totally separate room. I'd probably recommend getting a bigger TV. It obviously looked bigger in the store than when we put it here and we're like, oh, well shit, it's got all this white wall, right? We might get a bigger one, we might mount it. So that's another option. Then we created a little bit of dining room and because of the tiny space, we actually have it where it pulls out. That way you can tuck the benches right underneath You'll see a lot of different variations of this. If you wanted it to be permanent, you could actually build the table like into the wall, right? And then you can have it where the benches go underneath. We actually decided to buy one so you can move it around. No big deal there. Before we go into the bedroom though, let's go ahead and talk about these lights. So we wanted the vintage light bulbs, the ones where you can see inside of it. Edison bulbs, many people might actually call it. We wanted to make it feel like, okay, this is kind of like a unique design. So we chose these kind of like almost fishbowl looking light bulbs. And they actually were pretty cool. We actually really enjoyed that. And then of course, filled the rest of the space with all the rest of the lights. And then you're seeing up there over top of the bedroom, you're actually seeing storage. And once we go into the bedroom, you're gonna see it's a pull down. We had two different options here. We actually could have raised up the entire bedroom on a platform, right? And then made it where you had stairs going up and then you're in the bedroom and then the storage space is underneath. That storage space, hard, kind of hard to tell because that black ceiling, but it's actually only four feet high. So it's not very tall. So the problem with that method of lifting it up is now you have to basically crawl to get into the storage space. But I didn't mind that as much because now the bedroom is actually lifted up and because now the bedroom kind of faces the street in a sense, now the windows, it's kind of hard to open them without like being sort of exposed. So I really like the loft style, but for simplicity's sake, we went ahead and put the storage over top. Now you have a pull down ladder that allows you to access the storage. Let's go ahead and see some of the other design choices that I made here. Number one, bifold doors just to save space. Oh, sorry. All that noise. We put a small washer and dryer. You're going to notice this is not a naturally stackable one, but it does stack. And then we have an electric water heater that's helped save space. Some people call it instant hots, but they're really just tankless water heaters. Basically more than enough to service this type of the area. More importantly, it's really tiny. It's not a big giant tank, right? And then we have the furnace and such right here. And we can store cleaning supplies there, maybe store like mops and the vacuums there. So if we go into the actual bathroom, it's not that hard to get a full bathroom in a tight space. Realistically, this I imagine is probably only about five by six. It's not like a huge bathroom, kind of maybe slightly big. Mainly, you can see here from our design aesthetics that we kept with the black and white theme. So we have the black tile here on the floor, just keeping that with black grout. And then we get into the shower, we actually get white quartz that is actually here separating the space and then you go in the shower itself. Here in the shower, you can see 
that we actually did an accent wall, black tile, black grout, and then we did white tile on the two sides, but with the black grout still remaining. And that kind of led into this almost like bleeding of the black into the white tile and such. And then here in the insert and in the floor, we use a Jeffrey Court hex tile with black tiles and white grout. So kind of getting a cool transition of different black and white sort of mixtures here using black fixtures where we could, bronze if we couldn't get black. So you're seeing that with the shower head. And then of course, finalizing it out with maybe black towel bars and other black and white sort of fixtures. So keeping all of that and then leaving it up to the decorations to pull away from the black. So you're gonna see things like these plants and such, even the shower curtain. Of course, we also kept the Edison bulbs that you're also seeing. So, you know, basically keeping that design setting. Now you may notice that we actually kept the bathroom far away from the bedroom. It's actually bordering the kitchen. The reason from that is actually more practical. So the plumbing lines are all right here and we're on a ground level where we'd have to dig a trench all the way to the bathroom. Now, when you have drain lines, you need a certain fall per distance, right? Rather than making things super expensive, we just kept the bathroom on the other side, right here with the laundry facilities, right here with this bathroom. And like I said, it's a duplex. So we ended up connecting it with the bathrooms on the other side. A con of doing this. Anyone who's in the bedroom has to walk all across the common areas to use the bathroom and vice versa come back. Yes, that's not ideal, but we didn't think it was that big a deal in a studio or one bedroom apartment. Not that problematic. Most of the time, if you're gonna have guests here, they'll probably be understanding of the situation. You're probably not gonna sleep anyone here long-term since all you realistically have is a couch. We weren't really too worried about it. We expect the individual to be alone or maybe with a significant other at worst. Ideally though, if you can, you probably want the bathroom to be bordering the bedroom so that way they can access the bed and bath without traveling through common areas. So a little pro tip there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and bring you into the bedroom with the final design choices that I made. So let's go ahead and check it out. So here in the bedroom, we actually made a lot simpler choices. We actually lowered the ceiling, of course, made it really nice and cozy. It also helps keep the temperature in. The one disadvantage with those vaults and ceilings is the fact that heat rises. So let's say in the winter time, you're gonna actually have to try a lot harder to try to heat up this space because the ceilings are so high, the ce you know, it's not keeping that, insulate, uh, that heat insulated in. Well, in here, that changes that a little bit. So now it's a little bit more cozy toward that winter time. Now I'm not saying it's gonna get cold out there, but it just has to try harder. In the summertime, this ends up staying, you know, once again, cooler. It's trying to keep that space compact. So in the bedroom, we really wanted to keep it, the ceiling lower. For that reason, we did not paint the ceiling black. We didn't want it to keep it consistent. Like I said, even though these ceilings are clearly higher, it's like, I don't know, nine feet tall, we didn't want to paint them black. So basically we instead tape painted an accent wall black. You can see, obviously that's the brick, the same brick that was out there. And then we went more with these Edison bulbs and, you know, just kind of this, overall style. I mean, realistically, uh, not too much complicated about here. We had a little closet and that's really about it. Let me know what you think of our Airbnb design. Obviously it's not finished. We are gonna keep taking another direction. So if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments section below and I'll keep those in mind and maybe even implement these and show you in another video update. So I'll talk to you all very soon.